Whether you're dreaming of a retirement with sand between your toes and a cold one in your hand, hitting the road to chase the winds of adventure, or spending time with your grandchildren, this show is intended to help you get there. Welcome to Coasting in Retirement with your host, Josh Knoll. You've worked too hard throughout your career to spend your retirement worrying. So sit back, kick up your feet, because we've got lots of financial tips and tricks to share to help you get exactly where you want to be. Here's Josh. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Coasting in Retirement. I'm your host, Josh Knoll, and I'm joined by my co-host, Michelle Lee Melton. Michelle, how you doing? I'm doing fine. I was just griping about the weather, though. It's so March yes. weather with this coldness and raininess. Yet it's April, so yeah. every, everything's a and little global behind. warming should be working out for us down here. <laughs> right. Well, it's great to be back in the studio with you. Uh, we're taking a quick break from our Jubilee Studios in Daphne. This time we're recording our episode in Coastal College's podcast studio. Yay, college! Right, which is located here in downtown Fairhope, and it's actually right across the street from my Gulf Coast Financial Advisor's office, which is kind of cool, right? Yes. Okay. Well, hey, folks, Michelle and I are here today to discuss financial topics relevant to those in or near retirement living their best life here along our part of the Gulf Coast. If you're just tuning in, I can promise you that you'll want to stay tuned in. We've got a great show for you today. We're going to kick off the show with a discussion about our main topic, which I'll get to in a minute. Then stay tuned. We'll, about 15 minutes in, we'll dive into recent headlines with our Michelle with the News of the Week segment. Woohoo! Then, yep. And then about 30 minutes in or 30 past the hour, if you're listening to this on the radio, we'll get to poke a little fun at me with our Where Josh Nailed It, Where Josh Was a Little Off segment. And then finally, if we have time, we'll finish up with our Living the Gulf Coast Life segment where Michelle and I get to talk about all the cool stuff we get to do down here living in lower Alabama, although being out on a boat this week and this weekend is probably not part of that equation, right? Uh, sadly, no. Right. I mean, but you never can tell. You never can tell. Well, for those of you new to the show, quick background on me. Again, my name is Josh Knoll. I'm a fee-based fiduciary financial advisor. I hold my FINRA Series 65 securities license. And I'm the owner of Gulf Coast Financial Advisors. That is an independent investment management and financial planning firm based out of downtown Fairhope, Fairhope, Alabama. You can find more information on me and Gulf Coast Financial Advisors by visiting our website, gulfcoastfa.com. Or you can always give us a call at 251-327-2124. If you didn't catch that, don't worry. We'll repeat our contact, our contact info throughout the show. All right, so let's get to our main topic. I'm going to start it this way. Michelle, let me ask you a question. Recently, have you, or <laughs> past several months, have you or anyone you know been a little more nervous than usual about their money? Of course. Okay. All right. For me, that's standard since day one. That's but. standard since day one. But have you noticed a little more tenor in the air? Yes. Yes, I have too. And there, banks are failing. Right, yeah. And nobody seems to be doing anything about it. Well, we even well, we did. We did an episode on it. Well, we, we people, did. Help people explain it. Well, so but we're not in charge. Yeah, fair. That's right. So here's the thing. It's been a little unsettling out there, but fortunately, just like with explaining the bank failures, Michelle and I are here to help. Today, we are going to lay out four simple steps for those of you all that are nervous about your money, steps to take, especially, again, the show is geared towards those in or near retirement, or these, these are probably steps for any investor of any age. So let me repeat that. For those of you feeling a little uneasy regarding your retirement savings and investments, we've got a couple of solutions to consider. Got it? Good. All right. So in no particular order, let's lay out our four simple steps, and then we'll explain in greater detail throughout this first segment. Step number one, no particular order. If you don't have a financial advisor, consider using one, but only after you interview them first. Advisors come in many flavors. Some are investment management focused. Some do financial planning. Some are brokers. Some are insurance agents. Some are a mix of all the above. We're going to give you the tips on how to decide, one, how to figure out what kind of advisor they are, and also tips on how to decide what type of advisor to go with. Number two, consider getting a comprehensive financial plan and possibly forming an estate plan if appropriate. This is one of those things, if you haven't started taking, particularly for those of you all that have not started taking Social Security yet, uh, it's good to have a financial plan because that can help you optimize the timing of that decision. We'll talk more in detail here in a minute. Number three, get an analysis performed on your existing investment portfolio. We're going to talk more about the tools we use to help folks do kind of an MRI, X-ray type of thing of the portfolio. Tools such as Riskalyze, which it, we use to see if your investments are truly matched up to your goals and your time horizon. And tools like Retire Up, which we use to look at retirement income solutions. We'll, again, we'll touch base more on that here in a minute. And then number four, 
get basic tax planning services, not tax preparation, tax planning. Now, tax preparation would be the job of your accountant or your CPA, which I am neither. What I'm referring to is forward-looking tax planning, particularly if you are going to be using the sale of a business or a property to fund or at least partially fund your retirement. Again, one of the tools that we have, we like to talk about the tools we use because it's it's cool and I'm a nerd. One of the tools we have available to us is a software program called Holistoplan. We use it to do a deeper dive into your tax returns and to make sure you are keeping as much of your hard-earned dollars in your pocket as legally possible. Again, that sounds very metaphysical. I like that, right? Mm-hmm. Well, as, as with everything else, we'll touch more about these here in just a minute. All right, so Michelle, let's start with uh, number one. Again, folks, these are no particular order, but number one was if you don't have a financial advisor, consider using one, uh, but only after you interview them first. Michelle and I are going to give you some tips and some questions and some things to look for when you're looking at financial advisors. Uh, you know, even if you're coming in to talk to me, I'm, I'm happy to answer these questions. I'll probably answer a bunch of them in this episode anyway. But if, if you don't have a financial advisor, you know, it's one of those things where I, I understand why people can be hesitant to uh, utilize financial advisors, both because, you know, money is very personal. Uh, also, because that I think it's fair to say that sometimes our industry, the financial advisors, we've been given a little bit of a black eye for some of the things that we've done. You know, one would argue in some respects that uh, you know, a person can get just as far on their own. And if you're talking about just raw accumulation over the years, like in a 401k with, uh, you know, say target date funds, you're probably right. Really for this, for, you know, especially for the focus of this show, getting a financial advisor when you're in or near retirement, there's so many other factors at play that need to be accounted for. It's not, you know, the, the old adage in my industry is, you know, climbing up the mountain, great, you did it, you hit the peak, now you're about to retire. Well, how do you get back down, you know, without just falling down the mountain and, and getting in, in real bad shape? And what that means is, particularly with drawdown risk and something called sequence of return risk, which we're going to talk in about later in the show, also with income planning and tax planning, there's a lot of things that go into making sure that you don't outlive your money. And a good financial advisor, which is one you can uh, really drill down, down with the right questions to ask, and looking at their background and their experience and their areas of expertise is going to be something that hopefully will enhance your financial plan and really make it hit the goals that you're trying to hit. And, it, and I'm telling you, just having done this so many years, th- there's been maybe, I can count on one hand, the folks that have been able to do this on their own. And these are people that lived, breathed, and, and ate their own financial plan. I mean, they were all in almost like they were ha- had a second job. The, the rest of it, it's really good. It's kind of like getting an attorney or getting a CPA. Yes, you can do your own taxes. Yes, you can handle maybe some of your own basic uh, legal matters. But if you've done a good job of accumulation and now you've got, you know, you're looking at 20, 30, 40 plus years in retirement, get some help. You'll, you'll be glad you did and get the right help. All right. So number two was consider getting a comprehensive financial plan and possibly forming an estate plan if appropriate. This kind of goes hand in hand with, you know, talking to a financial advisor, because in my opinion, and again, we'll talk about this more later in the show, a good financial advisor is also going to be able to do give you a financial plan or be a financial planner. And it, it, it kind of ties into what we just said. If you've got a roadmap, getting to your destination, getting to the top of the mountain, that, those are great. I mean, you should applaud yourself if you've gotten yourself to a position, say, five years or less, maybe even a couple years or less, where you're ready to retire and you're feeling pretty good about it. But if you want to feel great about it and you want to take some of the emotion out of your money, particularly when we've you, you're retiring, possibly retiring into a very volatile stock market, which is what we've had the last couple of years, if you want to take some of that ease off uh, or put some ease into that, take some of the worry off the table, then look at getting a comprehensive financial plan. It's not, uh, generally speaking, it's probably not as expensive as you think. Uh, it Generally speaking, it's probably not as complicated or, or as invasive or any of these things. Uh, technology has really allowed people like me to be very efficient with our time and and uh, forming these comprehensive financial plans. Plus, with all, all of the ability to update information you know, in real time, you have a financial plan that is that changes and adapts with your life. Because even if you, let's say, you retire at 65, more likely than not, your life is going to be very different at age 80 or 85. Maybe even if you live to be 100 plus, right? Things are going to, your, your needs are going to change. Your plan needs to change with it. And we've got the ability to do that with a comprehensive financial plan. That's one of our really key focuses we have at Gulf Coast Financial Advisors. 
All right, let's uh, so let's talk about number three. Oh, one more thing on getting a comprehensive financial plan. If, if you forget everything else I say in this segment, for those of you that are have not taken Social Security yet, have not triggered it, which 62 years old is the earliest you can, and let's say you're 60 or maybe you're 62, 63, 64, and you've you've delayed it because you haven't needed the money yet. If you take nothing else away from this show, I think it's really important if you have not started taking your Social Security yet to talk to somebody about putting together a financial plan because that can absolutely help you optimize the timing of that decision. And for a lot of people, that is a really, really key decision for income planning and retirement uh, for Social Security. So anyway, last point on that. All right, moving to number three. Again, no particular order. Get an analysis performed on your existing investment portfolio so what does that mean? There, there are tools. I mean, you can do this manually. You know, a good financial advisor with investment management experience, uh, you know, somebody, especially somebody that's p- uh, picked their own uh, bas- basket of investments before, they can go through. They're going to recognize things that, that make sense for your situation. They're going to recognize things that maybe look a little, you know, like, okay, why'd you do this? You know, why why do you have a non-traded, non-publicly traded REIT when, you know, you're you you need liquidity on this other part of your portfolio, so on and so forth, right? But there's all just like with the financial planning uh, with tools like eMoney, there's been software programs come along relatively recently that has allowed advisors like myself to do an, an MRI or you know really in depth X ray at the very least of your investment portfolio. Tools like Riskalyze, and what Riskalyze is going to do, it's going to see d- do your investments. One, what is the actual risk score of your investments? You know, if you're a conservative person and you get in there and you've got a high risk score on your investment portfolio, well, you don't match up. Two, it's going to look at what is what are the fees in these in your investments. You may be in saying things are expensive that you don't necessarily need to be in, and it's it's, it's I'm telling you, having done this manually in the past, it's hard to really drill down and find all of the nooks and crannies of uh, the fees in various investments, particularly if you're in a, a loaded. You know, actively managed mutual fund. There's there's money flying out of your account all the time, so it, tools like Riskalyze really help us go in almost like you know a doctor having the ability to have the MRI MRI machine right there, and now we can really see what's going on inside that investment portfolio. Uh, another tool we use that is for retirement income solutions also plays into the retirement planning part of this. The financial planning is a tool called Retire Up, and that's really going to be it's a lot of it is math, but I mean it's really diving in deep using the algorithms combined with the common sense and the experience of the of the financial advisor using the tool to look at, okay, again, the number one thing for most people, anyone, most retirees, how do I not outlive my money, right? So these are things that we can definitely put together for you. If you're interested in, in that, particularly the risk allies exercise, happy to do that free of charge. Uh, just give us a call, 251-327-2124. It's, I, I'm such a nerd that I actually like using that tool. So, all right, and then number four, and uh, if you're just joining us, these are, if, if you're a little nervous about your money, your investments, these are four steps to help, hopefully help ease your mind. Um, number four was get basic tax planning services. So not tax pre- preparation. That would be the job of your accountant or your CPA. I'm neither. What I'm, again, what I'm referring to is forward-looking tax planning. Uh, again, particularly for you all that are using the sale of a business or businesses or property proper or some property to fund your retirement uh, you're you're going to be walking into probably a fairly unique and one-time tax event in your uh, career and your life, and it, you know if you don't get the the proper look at what you're doing, sometimes you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars left on the table that didn't need to be. You want you always want to pay your fair share. You always want to pay what what is due to the IRS, but you don't want to pay a penny more. And one of the things that we can do, again, going back to this, all these software tools that we have available, we can use a, a software program called Holista Plan. It's going to allow us to take a deeper dive into your tax returns, make sure you're keeping all, as much of your hard-earned dollars in your pocket as legally possible. But as important or more important, it's going to allow us to look forward. It's going to allow us to take into account the sale of the business or the retirement or possibly looking at doing a backdoor Roth or or you know, sale of property, all these things that are going to be unique to your situation that uh, really it's it's important, I think, that you make sure that you are really sticking the landing on how your tax 
uh, liability and and exposure. And we do that in hand, just so you know, any CPAs or accountants that are listening to this. Uh, my partner, Will Stye, is a CPA by training. He does not do tax returns. He does tax planning along with the financial advising and investment management that we do at Gulf Coast Financial Advisors. And I feel like uh, between Will and I, we do a great job of working with our CPA partners to help everybody get both the best way looking backwards, which is the CPA's job, and the best way looking forward, which is our job for the most part. And I think we do a great job. All right, folks, that was the top four uh, ways to maybe ease your mind if you're a little bit nervous about your money. Coming up next, there's always a lot going on in the world, particularly the world of finance. And as always, this past week was certainly an example of big news in finance. So every week, Michelle and I scour what she calls the interwebs for helpful financial articles related to our topic of the day, especially articles that pertain to those in or near retirement. So I want you all to join us after the break to hear Michelle and I discuss this week's relevant headlines in our Michelle with the News of the Week segment. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Michelle from Coasting Your Retirement, a show that you might have heard on Sundays at noon. If you're looking to inflation-proof your retirement and are ready to take that next step but don't want to wait for one of those upcoming seminars, just give the advisors at Gulf Coast a call today and schedule your no-obligation sit-down with Josh and his team. Maybe it's time for that second opinion after all. Call 251-333-5151 or visit us on the web at gulfcoastfa.com. And make sure to listen on Sundays at noon right here on the Talk 106.5. Advisory services offered through Prime Capital Investment Advisors, LLC, a federally registered investment advisor. PCIA 6201 College Boulevard, Suite 150, Overland Park, Kansas 66211. PCIA doing business as Prime Capital Wealth Management and Qualified Plan Advisors. PCIA and Gulf Coast Financial Advisors are not affiliated. Welcome back to Coast Senior Retirement. Your host, Josh Null here. So as we discussed before the break, every week Michelle and I scour what she calls the interwebs for helpful financial articles related to our topic of the day, especially articles that pertain to those in or near retirement. Michelle and I are then going to help you all understand and decipher the deeper meaning of these headlines, or hopefully at the very least, we'll provide some context. So without further ado, here is Michelle with the news of the week. All right, Josh, I'm going to start us off with an article related to your suggestion that folks consider using a financial advisor, but definitely interview said advisor first. The headline comes from CNN Business, quote, four things to ask for before you hire a financial advisor. This article talks about the different kinds of financial advisors, including how they get paid and the type of work they do and how investors should be pretty blunt when asking certain questions which I like them pointing that out because the potential financial advisor is going to be asking some pretty pointed questions. Yeah, fair, right? right? Yeah, I guess pretty okay. intimate. Pretty so quick. when someone is looking for your for a financial advisor, what do you think is the most important in their search? And do you think investors should be as bold with their questions as this article suggests? So, all right, so first answer your question, yes. I think investors should absolutely be bold with their questions. You don't necessarily want to be rude, you know, because sometimes uh, people in my industry can get kind of lumped together in a certain fashion, but definitely be bold. The, the problem with my industry is that, or not the problem, but one of the things that's confusing about my industry is that people get to use the term advisor in a, in a really broad array of different ways of, of going about doing investment and financial planning and, and advising. Apparently not in Canada. Not in Canada. Canada's a little different. Mm-hmm. And what happens is the regular everyday investor probably doesn't know how to tell one of us apart from the other. So here's what, let's do this real quick, Michelle. So the, here are some basic type of quote unquote advisors. There's fee only slash fee based. There's duly registered agents. There's brokers. There's insurance agents. So Snake so. oil. Well, salesman. now come on, easy. <laughs> now you sound like now you're being too blunt. But so fee based, fee only advisors. That would be fee for service. Those are the ones. That's kind of where the industry is going, where they charge a lot of times what is called an asset under management fee. Call it one percent on whatever investments that they manage for you. You can see what that fee is. Typically, uh, it's it's the most transparent way of managing investments. Uh, but it's not necessarily for everybody, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Duly registered agents, is it's one of those things that's kind of starting to slip away a little bit. That would be an, uh, an, an agent or advisor that could do the fee-for-service, but it could also sell you like Class A mutual funds or variable, variable annuities. You, they're still out there. You know, they're still the brokerage houses of the world, but you don't see as much. Brokers, that would be kind of along the lines of, you know, when you all uh, years ago watched Wall Street, you know, guys selling stocks or selling uh, mutual funds with a commission on it. 
uh, you know, staring at three computer screens all day, typically, not always, but typically. And of course, insurance agents, which are more often not going to steer you towards some type of insurance product or a, or an annuity product or anything like that, which we talk about on our previous episodes if you want more in depth on that. The, 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 here's a, really the most important thing. Most people are going to make, or a lot of the uh, media, if you will, will make a big deal about how the advisors are paid. And there is some importance to, importance to that, you know, especially when a lot of stuff is front loaded. But really what matters is if the advisor is being incentivized to perform the task you need. For example, are you a buy and hold investor? Say like a Dave Ramsey uh, system, you know, that buys American funds and holds them for 20, 30 years. Then maybe a commission based broker is fine. Really what though has happened is the industry has migrated to the fee for service model. That is what we are. We are fee for service. We're fee based. And if you listeners or if any of y'all are interested in learning more about what that means and how that compares and contrasts to what you have currently or, or maybe what you're looking at, just give us a call at 251-327-2124. Great headline, Michelle. What do you got next? Okay. Next, we're going to pivot to our good buddy, Chuck Swab. So Chuck Charlie. has a recent article titled Five Ways Financial Planning Can Help. So I like that. He gets it. Yeah, five. Four, five. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I did four on this episode just to aggravate you. Yeah. And I said something in between. So, okay. So secondly, the article states that only one third of Americans have a written financial plan. And in a survey of those that didn't, the three primary reasons were all related to folks thinking they didn't have enough money to make plan, to make a plan or enough time or just too complicated. It's also depressing and or scary. Those are my two that I'm adding. You added To that. add five. Yes. <laughs> okay. So as someone that helps people write last will and testaments, which I do, on the, I do um, I'm going to say that one third number seems a little high to me. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. That, the number sounds actually really high to me. I, I would guess it's probably more along the lines of five to 10%. I agree. Yeah. For all Americans have a financial plan and maybe, and I mean, maybe 15 to 20% for those of all, for folks that have done a good job of accumulation or maybe looking to retire. So, Michelle, first, let's tackle the reasons why people don't, uh, starting with they thinking they don't have enough money. Now, I'm going to tell you all, I've been doing this for a number of years. There is literally no magic number to, quote unquote, having enough money to need a financial plan. And, and what one person will view as a huge pile of money that will never run out, another person will view it as not nearly enough to be taken seriously by people in my industry. Uh, neither side of that usually is right. It, it's all dependent on the particular situation. I can also tell you from experience that most people... But a lot of times don't have as much money saved as you think. Uh, you know, they've got a big house, they got a fancy car. Sometimes that's misleading. As Michelle likes to say, uh, stop comparing your insides to someone else's outsides. Right on. Right. So to answer, so that's the one on not enough money. If you have anything, if you have something to lose, if you have people that are, uh, you know, really count on you to make this money last, then you're a good candidate for a financial Breeders. Plan. Right. Also, now to answer the question on time and complexity, we use, here we go again, talking about the software tools that we have. We have tools like eMoney, RetireUp, Plan. We have all these tools, particularly with eMoney and, and RetireUp, that make it relatively easy to gather and sort the data that we need to go into an ongoing dynamic financial plan. It's not that hard anymore. It used to be a lot of... Um, What's that thing we would use in math where you had to... Look? Abacus? Yes, it used to be a lot of abacus type of work. It's that Those days are done. And so... And plus, the plan gets, is, gets, is easy to update. You can stitch in a lot of your other accounts into it. So it's an ongoing, living, breathing plan. It's, and it takes a fraction of the time that it used to. So if y'all are interested in starting that conversation about a comprehensive financial plan, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It's not going to be that complex, and it's not going to take some of your time. Give us a call. It's one of the main things we do at Gulf Coast Financial Advisors. Call us at 251 327 Two one two four. I like that. Yeah. Also, this article. What I, another thing I want to point out is that it did say that when it talked to people, whatever category they might have been in, when they started making a financial plan and had one, how big or small that might be, it did boost confidence in yes. them. No matter what, whatever tax bracket they were in, they felt more confident. Well, we're going to talk about that peace of mind that comes with having a financial plan to go along with your your investments. So that's great. Great point. All, All right, right. Very well. So for our next headline, I decided to go with something that sounded aggressive. Okay. I'm scared. Yes. Although it does introduce couch potato investing, <laughs> which was my takeaway because that sounds like my style. Okay. Right. So, but I think it speaks to some of the reasons that people are nervous about using or even meeting with a financial advisor. I pulled this from Money Genius and it's titled Trusting Your Financial Advisor. Dash 11 signs they may be ripping you off. 
Okay, so firstly, obviously, the title is way long. <laughs> okay, I'm exhausted reading it. And the article is actually pretty long, too, to go with, with said title. Things. Yeah, exactly. So, and I know this subject is near and dear to you, so I'm just going to let you riff for a minute about what your thoughts on this long-winded article. All right, well, so, yeah, 11 things. First, I think the article is actually written in Canada. Is that right? It is actually Canadian couch potato investing. Okay. Quarter Canadian, eh? Yeah, Michelle's quarter Canadian. There you go. So yeah, so in passive both, and low key. There you I go. like that. All yeah, right. So some of the terms that they use in the article are going to be a little different than what we use in the U.S., but the same basic principles will apply. There's there's pretty good meat on the bone in this article, Michelle, and mm-hmm. and as you just teed up, a lot of it actually irritates me just as it would a common investor. I, you know, as I I tell folks that know you know get to know me pretty well, and particularly clients that come on to our our practice. I got into this business actually in my mid 30s. I did not do this right. Even though I went to college for this, I didn't circle back into it until I was in my mid 30s. And I was already a full grown man then. So I came into all this with a pretty healthy dose of, dose of skepticism for some of the promises and some of the nonsense I would hear from this in our industry. And so some of the things in the article that, that both make a good point and also get in my own personal crawl would be when your financial advisor doesn't explain how they get paid. That's a huge red flag. They should be upfront with that. Um, this one, you know, your financial advisor boasts how he can, he or she can easily beat the market. Oh my God, run, Liars. run for the hills. I mean, that's that's a very, very unique trait that very, very few people have. Uh, you know, Warren Buffett and, and some hedge fund managers, but not your everyday regular Joe Blow is going to have that trait or that, that skill. You know, it's some, and I've seen this like a lot of times, and no offense to my insurance base, brethren, but you know, a lot of times in that industry, when you do talk to your financial advisor, they're be, they're kind of under pressure to sell you something because they're typically commission based, and they've got it. You know, got to, it's called eat what you kill, which is not so great for the client sometimes. And then the other thing they had on there, uh, and I didn't pick out all eleven because that would be our whole show. Ugh. But your financial pl- planner hasn't offered you a financial plan. Well, anybody who listens to the show regularly or checks our website or talks to us knows that. Talking, discussing, having a financial plan is one of the first things we're going to discuss. If you want to have that conversation, again, give us a call, 251-327-2124. Very good, Canada. Yes. What's next? What do we got in the U.S.? Okay. Back to the United States. So, well, our third step in our opening segment, the one regarding getting an out analysis of your investment portfolio. I hesitate including this article and commenting on it because it's probably going to sound like I'm picking on the author some, but she actually sounds very intelligent. Okay. The article is from Morningstar.com, not the ha- not the veggie burgers. Right. Uh, and it's titled "A Year in Portfolio Review in Seven Easy Steps." I don't know how easy they are, but there are seven, so she gets accolades for that as well. So, I only counted two, maybe three, that are actually what I would call, quote, easy, unquote, in this list. Assess your asset allocation. All right, I kind of get it. I I follow that. Check the adequacy of your liquid reserves. That makes me seem I need to stock my bar. That's what that sounds like to me, which is also a fact. Okay. Um, And then there's this dude, is he? Assess sub-allocations and troubleshoot other portfolio level risk factors so i kind of blanked out after that so what does she mean and how in the world would you be considered easy (laughs) if 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 it is i mean i'm in this nerdy thing every single day and even that's that's a that's a mouthful right there so and here's the thing i think it's fair to say that my industry does sometimes like to use big and obtuse terms uh, you know, maybe even to make ourselves maybe sound a little smarter than we are. Yes, that's right. a common thing. But to be fair, because th- there'll be a link to this uh, article on our website when we transcribe the show, I do not think that this author is doing it with the article. She seemed she seemed pretty sincere and pretty intelligent, to be fair. Uh, and she makes a couple of points that I think most folks would understand, such as conduct a wellness check, assess your asset allocation, look at inflation protection. Uh, inflation protection is something we talk a lot about on this show, right? Making sure you've got part of your portfolio dedicated. Which is important because it keeps on going up. That, 100%. It did cool off a little bit here lately, but it's still going up, right? But, you know, checking the ad- adequacy of your liquid reserves. Uh, Hard sub, to say. You know, sub-allocations. Uh, phew, I'm not even sure I knew what a sub-allocation was until I'd been in the business for a couple of years. These are things that I think, if anything, point to the need to have a qualified financial professional help you guide through some of these things because they're important steps, but they can be a little bit complicated. So, uh, you know, this, some of this kind of long run that what I just said with sub allocations will be something that a program like Riskalyze would be a great 
fit for. So, of course, selfishly, these are the things that we all do at Gulf Coast Financial Advisors. I, we are kind of math and nerd numbers and nerds, but in a good way. So give us a call, 251-327-2124. I prefer words. Two one two four. Yeah, I prefer math and numbers. <laughs> all right, very good. What, we got time for one more? We do, but it's hump day and I'm exhausted, so I'm just going to do one more headline. Okay. So I'm going to go deep this time, though. We usually reference new sites that the general public would visit or at the very least serious investors would read, such as Barrett's which I now get in my inbox every day. Okay, but this time I'm going to a site that I believe is probably read more by financial advisors like yourself versus everyday savers like me. And I'm talking about Michael Kitsy. Kitsis. K- okay, Kitsis. It's Kitsis. Kitsis. Okay, site. Nerd's eye view. Right. And let me tell you, he is a nerd. He is. Because I read up on this guy. Whew, Lord. Mean, he, that is one busy dude. He, yeah, and he was doing creating software on the side. Like yes. in his, what? Okay, enough yeah. already. Okay. Anyway. He has a blog he wrote called Systematizing Reviews of Client Tax Returns by Building Software to Automate Them. And boy, did he do it. So, I know this blog is mostly about tax planning software. Who is the plan? So, Josh, why don't you explain who this nerd is and <laughs> why what he has to say about Lista Pan how what do you guys say about how Lista Plan is useful to our listeners. So Michael Kitsy, if you're listening to this, you've Kitsy. been a huge you've been a huge inspiration and <laughs> we mean it's no offense. But you are yeah, I mean it, he's and he he leans, It sounds like the football players. Well he leans the brothers. In, he leans into it a little bit too to be fair. So for those of y'all most the average investor is not gonna have have heard of, of this guy Kitsy. Um, but I can here's the easiest way to sum it up because his bio is huge. If there was right, if there was ever a need for like a CNN or a Fox News or MSNBC or anybody like that to bring on quote unquote the expert in what financial advisors and planners do and what they're thinking, Kitsy would be the guy. Uh, he's as plugged in as anyone in our industry. He started a ton of great platforms for advisors like myself, and he really was a first mover with his blog and his podcast. Now, to be fair, I think Kitsy is affiliated with Lista Plan. But he's got such a reputation as a straight shooter that I don't really think it matters with what they're trying to uh, promote on here. In, in a nutshell, and again, I want to remind everybody, I'm not a CPA or an accountant by training, uh, but I am a financial advisor and I do dive into a lot of this stuff. We do use Holista Plan. We do some b- basic tax planning. But basically what the Holista Plan is going to do, it's going to start with a tax return. There's going to be a set of algorithms that are going to be run on it. It's going to spit out a report that, hey, here are some of the key figures on the return. And it's not going to mean it doesn't really spit out recommendations right off the bat. It's more observations, but it's things that you can take action on. And then the other cool thing is what it does is it will build in. It's got a projection tool. So not only can you make observations on the tax returns that are already filed, you can also look at start running some numbers for the next year. For example, you know, let's do we want to take that capital gain or not? Do we want to do a Roth conversion or not? And, you know, what's going to happen to my self-employment income if I move block A to block B, so on and so forth, right? So really at the moment, the idea is it it helps guys like me, financial advisors like me, men and women, to do end-to-end tax planning, forward-looking tax planning. And it really, and and it's cool thing is it it, it provides a really nice and easy to understand deliverable to clients. It's a great, great tool that that we use that uh, I'm excited to use more and more, particularly because I do partner up, as you know, Michelle, I partner with a fellow advisor named Will Stye. Yes. What? Will is a CPA by training. He is, he does not do tax returns, but he is also really good at using his accounting background and the list of plan software to take it at someone's unique uh, tax situation. So anyway, for those of y'all that um, want to keep a little bit more of your hard earned dollars in your pocket, of course, up to the legal limit. Why don't you give us a call? We can run that analysis for free and we can start a conversation. 251 327 2124. All right, is that it, Michelle? Is that the end of the headlines? That's a wrap. All right, very good. Well, great job as always. These are all, in my opinion, important pieces of information that's going to or already is going to impact those of you in or near retirement. And again, listeners, if you have questions around the headlines that and the topics that we discussed, And and particularly, as you can see, a lot of this is related to your investment strategies and your financial plan. Just give us a call. It's 251-327-2124. It's just going to be a conversation. There's no obligation. There's no fees associated with it. Or if you prefer to to reach out via email, just find our contact page on our website, gulfcoastfa.com. That's G-U-L-F-C-O-A-S-T-F-A as in financialadvisor.com. All right, folks, coming up after the break, we get to have a little fun, and we have fun anyway, but we get to have a little more fun, and I'll probably get picked on a little bit by my co-host, Michelle. Mm -hmm. In our next segment, we call it Where Josh Nailed It, Where Josh Was a Little Off. And so here's the thing. As someone that has always had strong opinions, 
and often sometimes public opinions. I think it's important to hold myself accountable for the things I've said that didn't quite stick the landing. But to be fair, we also get to discuss where my often skeptical viewpoints proved to be pretty accurate. Hello, Bitcoin, crypto. Thank you. <laughs> right. So remember, everybody, I'm originally from the show me state of Missouri. So which that what's that mean, Michelle? That you have to show them and not just talk about it. Don't tell me. Show me. Stay tuned. Hi, Michelle here. If you're looking to inflation-proof your retirement and are ready to take that next step but don't want to wait for one of those upcoming seminars, just give the advisors at Gulf Coast Financial Advisors a call today and schedule your no-obligation in-person review with Josh and his team. Maybe it's time for that second opinion. Make sure to call 251-333-5151 or visit us on the web at gulfcoastfa.com. That's G-U-L-F-C-O-A-S-T-F-A, as in financialadvisors.com. Advisory services offered through Prime Capital Investment Advisors, LLC, a federally registered investment advisor, PCIA 6201, College Boulevard, Suite 150, Overland Park, Kansas 66211. PCIA doing business as Prime Capital Wealth Management and Qualified Plan Advisors. PCIA and Gulf Coast Financial Advisors are not affiliated. All right, welcome back. Your host, Josh Knoll here alongside my lovely co-host, Michelle. Hello. Yeah, so if you know me in real life, then you know that I tend to have strong opinions. And as someone that has had a radio show in the past, uh, before this one, predecessor, and a couple of podcasts over the years, I've often espoused those opinions publicly. <laughs> sometimes, Good word you said, I like that. I like that, yeah. Yep. Som- sometimes I've been proven right with time, and sometimes... <laughs> yeah, let's just, Skunked it up. Yeah, just didn't quite stick the landing. So what, each week, Michelle and I, uh, we, we get to do this segment, and we use it as a way to poke a little fun at myself, at the thoughts and opinions that I put out there that maybe weren't 100% on point. But to be fair, again, I can be a little skeptical. Sometimes I'm right. I've been right. So I'm also able to point out some of those thoughts and opinions to our listeners and plus the lessons that we learn from both. We call this segment where Josh nailed it, where Josh was a little off. All right, Michelle, what you got? What's first? Okay, so a little blast from the past. In one of our previous episodes, you and I talked about how bond laddering had become a valid way to generate income in retirement. Now that rates had risen to competitive levels after so many years of low interest rates. You also stated that the recent bank collapse of Silicon Valley Bank could have possibly been avoided if the bank's executives had simply laddered their bond holdings instead of, of just putting so much money into long-term bonds. Did you nail that or were you a little off? I know the answer. Oh, you do. Okay. All right. So th- to be fair, this is an overly simplistic way to look at it. But in general terms, yes, I nailed, nailed it. it. Right. There's no guarantee that SBB, the bank we're referring to, or or particularly uh, uh, Silicon Valley Bank, would have made it if they had laddered their bonds. But they, because what is emerging is a lot of other poor decisions coming, and and that might be some PR for all we know. I mean, there may be a lot of banks making that decision, but the one thing that they definitely did that is what got them in trouble, and we talked about this on a previous episode, is they went long on eighty plus billion. Of their Ooh. securities, Ooh. their debt instruments. In fact, I think it was mostly mortgage securities. It was. Right. And what happens in simplistic terms is when you buy the debt instrument that long, you're buying it at a certain interest rate. When the interest rates rise, which they did very rapidly, now the the price, the the uh, competitive price to sell that bond drops. Well, here's the thing. If you're not, if you're not under pressure to sell that bond, then you just hang on to it till maturity. You collect your interest and you move on down the road. It kind of, you know, yeah, it kind of sucks. You, you maybe you collect two percent when you could have got four percent, but no harm, no foul. Generally speaking, right? What happened here is uh, there was a spook, uh, some type of spook on the bank, and people started withdrawing money. Well, anybody who knows anything about banks knows that. Banks don't hold all their money in cash. You know, we've all seen the old shows where they open up the vault and there's got like, the gold bars. Yeah, there's like yeah, you, know, you know, a bunch of gold bars. That's not how it works. And so, what happened with uh, SVB in particular is they started having to sell these uh, long-term uh, debt instrument securities at a significant loss, and so it just spiraled quickly. Right? Yes. Now, what? So, what have they done, and why they didn't do this? I don't know. I'm sure there there had to be at least some type of of pretty smart. Uh, folks running the joint. But instead of looking at all of the money that was getting pumped into the economy by our U.S. government and saying, hey, inflation may be on on the horizon. And what happens, what comes along with inflation? 
higher interest rates. Mm -hmm. Maybe we ought to structure this a little bit like our retirees do, and we'll have our our debt instruments maturing at different time periods, and we're going to shorten up the maturity time period. That way we don't get stuck with $80 billion of, of decreasing value uh, bond security. So, but they didn't, and that's what happens. <laughs> sure did. Uh, yeah. So on on this one, definitely nailed it. Now I'm, I'm sure more information will emerge because it better. you know it was the second largest bank failure of all time, right? So th- there's going to be, if nothing else, some PR work there on on who to blame. But uh, really, what it came down to was simple math. Got yep. them in the end. So nailed it. Yeah, and math's really not hard. No, it's not not, <laughs> not know, in this one. It's yeah, actually yeah. one of the sim- more simple things right. in our industry. To I still say I still am amazed the bank couldn't even sell itself. It's okay, whatever. Um, okay, so in one of your seminars late last year, you discussed sequence of return risk and how you were concerned that those retiring in twenty twenty three were facing a simu- similar situation to those folks who that retired in two thousand eight. What a dummy d- d- guy I was. Back then. Yeah. Yes, dumb doomsday. Right. The main point I think you were trying to make. And all that is that all the indications pointed to a significant stock market decline in 2023, possibly even a bear market. While maybe not as severe as 2008, hope not, a significant market dip right out of the bat could set investors' portfolios back years. As you said many times before, you're not a soothsayer. We haven't finished our mind reading classes yet, and we don't have a crystal ball. But do you feel that you nailed it, or are you a little off with this opinion? Well, okay, so to be fair, we pointed this also out back in one of our February episodes of Coaster and Retirement. And here we are again in April of 2023, and yet again, yet when you look at the index, the average indexes across the board, you'd have to say I was a little off so far, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Dow is up, I think, over a percent. Uh, the S&P, I think, is up actually around 7%. Uh, the Nasdaq 100, even with all of the tech beatings that's been going on with uh, you know with Tesla and whatnot, the Nasdaq is is up in general. And yeah, the funny thing is, Michelle, I'm, I'm, obviously I'm I'm dancing around the, the fact that I've been a little off, but I'm usually the glass half full guy. Annoyingly so. Right. Fair. Thank you. All right. I'd rather be that than not. But so so here's the thing. What what Michelle's referring to is sequence of return risk. And again, this comes back to simple math. I'm not going to bore you with all the nitty-gritty details, but I'll just give you kind of a rough example. If you had two brothers retire uh, with a million bucks, and one retired at the beginning of a prolonged bear market, that means the market's down, and one retired when the market was steady or possibly even rising, what's called a bull market, what is so, so vitally important to your overall longevity or portfolio is those rates of returns early in your retirement. If you've got a, a pretty banged up uh, down market, especially like 2008, uh, if you look at the projections, you can have, even though you both started with a million dollars, the guy, the man or woman that started retirement in a very down market or even just a, a bear market is going to run out of money years ahead of the other person. Sometimes, I remember the graph. Yeah, sometimes 10 to 15 years earlier. And so it's really so important that you, you don't want to be pessimistic. Uh, maybe I was having a, a bad day back <laughs> there in November, <laughs> December. But you definitely want to account for sequence of return risk. It's something that we are going to look at because I, I will say common sense will tell us that you and I may be having an episode here in a couple months and we may be, I may be saying I nailed it <laughs> on some of the market getting beat up. But sequence of return risk, if you want to learn more, give us a call, 251-327-2124. We're happy to have that conversation with you, especially those of you all looking at retiring this year. So Yeah, and the graph is pretty telling that you have and when you go along with it's that. It's math. I mean, yeah, not, it's not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, all right, what you got next? Okay, so you've openly and often encouraged retirees to delay taking Social Security until their full retirement age because the benefit increases by 8% annually. But recently, there's been stories about Social Security running out of money by 2034, which I also tend to believe. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought of you the first time I saw the first. Po- of course, I think it's going into a black hole and I'll never see it. Um, but it, it sure does come out of my paychecks. But anyway, so instead of waiting, shouldn't people grab all their money they can, they can <laughs> before this thing goes belly up? Did you nail it or were you a little off? All right. So as far as my opinion on if you can, if you, you know, if you've got a plan, it comes back to financial planning and it makes sense and you can delay Social Security, then in general, I'm going to I'm going to say, hey, I've nailed that opinion. More often than not, if you will hang tight, you're going to have a much higher benefit. It's the only thing we've said this in the past, Michelle, and you always going to be really careful because this can be misconstrued. But it's really about the only thing out there where you can squint at it sideways and say that it gives you an 8% return year over year, at least up until your full retirement age or, age, or particularly age 70. Now, you can't guarantee that, but that's basically how the, the whole structure is set up. 
Uh, there's no other investment on earth that can, can look at that for income uh, increases, especially backed by the full faith of the United States government. And which m- allows me to pivot to why I still think I've, I've nailed this. Yeah, mathematically, Social Security is going to run out of money at 20, uh, two, 2034, latest projections, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off my financial advisor math nerd hat. And I'm going to put on my, my uh, United States citizen hat. And, I, and I'll ask you, Michelle, do you, is there any politician that's going to let Social Security lapse? There, might, there may be. I don't know. I don't, here's my thing. Listen, right, I, so I was watching my, some hearings today, so it's questionable. Well, it, here's, here's what I, most people don't realize. Social Security is literally the most successful program in the history of mankind. For now. For, at dramatically reducing elderly poverty. I'm going to repeat that. Social Security is the most, in world history, nothing has been as successful at reducing elderly poverty. I mean, they instituted Social Security almost over a third of the elderly United States over age 65 were in poverty. And now it's less than 10%. Now, not to make light of the ones that are still in poverty, please don't take no disrespect, but I'm talking, I'm saying it is just, it's been a dr- drastically successful program. The two things I think you will see, uh, one is I think there's a possibility of means testing. You know, if you retire and you've got, you know, 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, whatever the number is, whatever chart they look at, they're going to say, hey, we're, we're not going to not give you Social Security, but we're not going to give you the, the same amount that we're going to give someone that does not have your type of retirement. And two, I think as we see this generational boom of more young people, which is young people with what saves the world, you're probably going to see a little bit more uh, aggravation or more complaining the fact that Hey, because Social Security basically, Michelle, is taking money from young people and giving it to old people. Yeah, it is. It's happening. Yeah. Right. So I think they're working for a long time. As as this (laughs) political class of baby boomers and and Gen Xers start to age out and you got more young people coming in, there may be some pushback on that. But in my opinion, no. If you can hang tight and delay your Social Security uh, coupled with a comprehensive financial plan so you understand what's going on and you're not just adding stress to your life, I think you should. I think I nailed it. And I think if anybody wants to have that conversation, particularly about some of the things we can to to look at optimizing that choice again give us a call 251-327-2124 very good michelle and i don't totally agree but no we don't and we've talked about the social security before because i I, it's sus to me very suspect all right but even though the payments did go up this year that was one of our earlier episodes i think tiddlywinks 108 dollars or something now remember it went up eight over eight percent oh is that what it was yes yes so i think it ironed out to 108 dollars there was some kind of number like that so when we're on our 20th year of coasting retirement (laughs) then we'll both be able to tell you all if we nailed it for a good or if we're getting Social Security. All right. What do you got next? Okay. All right. You have stated that because at various points in your career, you have once hosted a weekly 30-minute radio show and additionally two podcasts that start... I feel like Ron Burgundy, like I'm kind of a big <laughs> around here, but I'm not. And mentioned that starting a weekly one-hour radio show on a major local FM station would be no big deal. Caps. Yeah. Period. Space pause right so and i've got some opinions about this too but since i'm on board with this one i can't compare it to your previous stints but did you nail it or were you a little off well okay so first uh to be flattering on my choice of co-host for our new show coasting retirement i nailed it big time right uh, obviously Out of the park, right yeah. totes jim michelle melton thank you michelle lee melton thank you very much but we, it, you know, honestly with the rest of the show being no big deal because of my past experience i, I was way off you know our, <laughs> our, our show it Coast, is time consuming yeah coasting retirement is a completely different situation from my prior efforts um listeners you should know that we, we kind of make a joke of this, but the, the links, the great links and energy that Michelle and I go to prep and record this show. Yeah, this yeah. is in addition to our day jobs, right, which yeah. we have a couple of those, yes, too, because we, we have yeah. side hustles and whatnot. That's right. Yeah, it's like working in a coal mine almost. And right. we're social creatures. That's right. So hey, let me explain. You know, the, the first radio show I had was called Focus on the Five. Baldwin County is county number five in Alabama. It was about focusing on business owners here in Baldwin County. Human interest piece, if you will, uh, on WABF 1480. And on that show, Michelle, all I had to do was ask questions. Right. The people I had on were great. Yeah, and they wanted to talk about things. They did, yeah, I was, it was business, there to promote yeah. their business, right? And, and it really helped me get to know people in the community. It was how I kind of started my business down here. I'm so glad I did it. And then the podcast that I would do in the past, Every Dollar Counts and Wealth and Waves, those were recorded in batches, and the, the episode time was usually 15, 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes at most. So, And then plus here, what we do with Coaster and Retirement, listeners, regular listeners know that we have some – evergreen topics 
but we really have set it up to be a timely show. Yeah, I mean, Michelle, yeah. the news of the week, that's a timely segment. So it, every week we've got to dive in and do these things. So, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I, I came in probably a little cocky on, you know, handle this. Uh, but I'm so glad that we decided to do it. And I think it's worthwhile. And I think we put out a good show. So I'm, I'm happy. Well, I'm I, na- I nailed hope it everybody on. agrees. I agree. Yeah. Keep listening. That's right. All right. Very okay. Good. Yeah. A little off. <laughs> Just a little. Got one more? I do. All right. All right. You said often that most investors with a written financial plan, which we talked about earlier, tend to weather stock market volatility a little more calmly than those with just an investment portfolio or stock account or stock accounts. You've also said that the type of account an investor has often depends on the type of advisor they've chosen to help them. Did you nail it with these two related opinions or were you way off? All right. So first, let's talk about um, what. Yeah, so number one, yeah, nailed it. This that's uh, this is a big you know softball down the middle for me. Let's talk about when you have a. You're fi- welcome. Right when you have a financial plan, what that does among many things, and Michelle, you mentioned it earlier. There's it's a there's a calming effect. It gives you some confidence. Yes. Right. You have your handle around it mm-hmm. about your you know because well, part of it's not knowing, and once you know, it's like it's half the battle. And that right. what GI Joe said or something. Well, yeah. Plus, yeah. Plus, it helps take the emotion out of your yes. money. Right. And additionally, what it does, it will help put your investment portfolio in its proper perspective, particularly for those of you all that have a long-term horizon. Now, this is going to surprise some of you pre-retirees and retirees when I say most of you have a long-term horizon. Here's what I mean. You're going to have part of your portfolio, your investment portfolio, that should be geared towards the long-term. That's the only way that you're going to be effectively fighting the inflation battle, the interest rate battle, things of that nature. And remember... For those of you all that are retiring in your you know sixties, early sixties, mid sixties, even you know even early seventies or lo- later, people are living longer and longer and longer than ever before. Indeed, right. And so let's say that you even let's say you even have to wait till you're in your seventies or you want to wait until you're in seventies. There's at least a decent chance you're going to have twenty years of retirement. And if you look at the stock market over any particular time, twenty year time period. Uh, you know, again, as long as you believe in the future United States, obviously, but over any 20 year <laughs> time period, it tends to go up over time. Right. Mm-hmm. But what happens is painful in the short run. And what can happen, what can help you in the short run is when you see these these dips and the dips are going to happen, they're, they're going to have they just come. What is kind of skewed it a little bit over the last couple of years, particularly since COVID, is the dips, the ups and the downs. What M- Michelle, Michelle referred to earlier, the stock market volatility has been historic. You know, the difference between the lows and the highs has been yeah. greater than ever in the history of the market. It's nuts, right? And the predictions were way off for the last, whatever, 10 or 20 years. Right. So when you've got a a financial plan and you've got the right type of advisor, we talked about earlier in the show, I am a fee-for-service, fee-based financial advisor. There are duly registered advisors out there. There's brokers. There's insurance agents. The different kind of advisor, as long as you've got the one that fits you the best, I would argue fee-based and fee-only is the way to go, but that's that's obviously I'm going to be a little uh, biased there. But if you've got that coupled with a comprehensive financial plan and you've got your money doing the, the work that it's supposed to be doing in there, including maybe getting ahead of some of your worries of, of the market going down and moving that money into something that's a little bit more capital preservation based, then what's you're going to have a greater calmness and a, and a greater uh, something where you don't have to look at this stuff every single day because you know you've got a plan in place. You've got a you've got a roadmap and you're staying on course, right? That sound good, Michelle? Indeed, it does. All right, and of course we do comprehensive financial planning at Gulf Coast Financial Advisors. You can call us two five one. 327-2124 or find us online gulfcoastfa.com Gulf Coast G-U-L-F-C-O-A-S-T F-A is in financialadvisor.com All right, Michelle, so we're done with that segment. You have anything else? We got everything? Nope. That's it. Good. Once again, listeners, of course, I didn't totally nail it with all my opinions, but I think... It wouldn't be fun if you did. It would, but I think I had valid reasons sometimes for being a little off. Sure. And, and as with everything, as you get older, you learn to be a little more open-minded. So now to our listeners that have more questions about the things we talked about in this, again, one more time, call us at 251-327-2124 or find us online. You can, if, if, gulfcoastfa.com or it's easier to remember, just Google Gulf Coast Financial Advisors. I typically were the first result there. You can also put in Fairhope, Alabama. You put in Baldwin County. We're going to pop up. All right, folks, that's it for us here at Coast Senior Retirement. I want to give a huge thank you to my lovely co-host, Michelle Lee Melton. I thank you to our awesome radio station, uh, FM Talk 106.5. Many thanks to the provider of our show music. That's local band Sloth Racer. That's Sloth like the uh, the slow animal. Sloth Racer music is not slow. You can find them online. And as always, uh, my sincere appreciation for all of you out there 
that have been listening and joining us on this journey. Of course, we would love to be a part of your journey as well in our role as financial advisors. But until we talk again next Sunday, have a wonderful and productive week. This has been Coasting in Retirement with Josh Null. Advisory products and services offered by investment advisor representatives through Prime Capital Investment Advisors, LLC, a federally registered investment advisor, PCIA, at 6201 College Boulevard, Suite Number 150, Overland Park, Kansas, 66211. PCIA doing business as Prime Capital Wealth Management and Qualified Plan Advisors. Certain services may be provided by PCIA affiliates. In this format, Josh Knoll provides general information, not individually targeted personalized advice, and is not liable for the usage of the information provided. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles should not be considered investment advice or the recommendation to buy or sell any of these financial vehicles. This information should also not be considered tax or legal advice. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments will fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. 